Is it time to have your brake pads changed again and you thought you wouldn't mind doing it yourself being mechanically minded, but you've never done it before? Then come along with me and I'll show you how to do it safely while saving you some money. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. So this year is my 40th year of driving and from the very beginning, I've always done my own mechanical work. But these days, cars are becoming very complicated. But I still do servicing, changing oil and little basic things, oil filters, and I still do my own brakes. There is a right and wrong way of doing it. And over the 40 years, I've never had a problem with my brake pads or even brake shoes back in the old days. But I always use a good brand and Bendix is one of the best. So when it comes to brakes, I will not cut corners and buy cheaper products because your life is on the line. So changing brakes is quite easy, but you do have to be very safe. Okay, so now I'll get into it and show you how to do it. So I've jacked up the car in the center of the front and then I put two stands and then I've lowered it back down onto the stands to, to make it safe, but I still kept the jack there. And I've also put the tires under the car just in case something fails, then at least the car will just rest on the tires and uh, it'll keep you safe. And I've opened the bonnet as well and just to have access to the brakes master cylinder, which is where you put your oil in. So looking in the master cylinder, you can see there's no oil on top, but if you look sideways, you can see it's about halfway. So as the brakes get lower and lower, as they're being used, used up, the uh, cylinder inside the caliper starts to take up more oil. So when you push that cylinder back, which we'll do in a moment, then the oil will go back up again. But if not, we'll top it up with some Bendix oil. So this disc looks quite good. There are no scratches in it. And so if you leave your brakes too long, if they're worn out and they touch metal with metal, uh, then it will damage the disc. And then you're gonna have to take the disc out and take it to a mechanic to machine it. But you can only machine it a couple of times. So it's best to change your brakes well before time but these are really good and it hasn't been machined before. You can see by the thickness of the discs uh, if they've been machined. So these brake pads have still got a bit of meat on them, but the rear ones are totally gone. So I'm gonna change all the brake pads today. So these brake calipers are held on only by two screws. Uh, and in this case, it's an 18 mil socket. So this is just a basic car made by General Motors and it's a Holden Cruise. And you'll find most cars have a common way of taking these brake pads out and also pushing the calipers back. Okay, so now all I've got to do is remove those two bolts. Okay, Okay, that's the first one out. So this one's a little bit lower down the bottom. So I've taken the extension off. Okay. <clears throat> it's out. So just, just, just use a flat screwdriver and just pull the caliper out. Okay, so this is the caliper and the brake pads are sitting just in here like this. Okay, so there's still plenty of meat on these ones. Um, so I'll keep these for the future, but I did want to change all my brakes one go. I'll just get that one out. And just here is the piston. What we basically have to do is push this piston back so we can put the new pads in. We need enough room. And this cylinder is sitting out probably about 10 mil. And when you do push it back, it's got to be pushed back evenly. If you push it on one side only, it will jam the piston. So be careful not to do that. Okay, to make this easier, I'm just going to take this one screw off and get this section out of the way. So now it's just the piston that exposed just here. Okay, so that's the piston and we just need to push that in. Okay, so just to help me carry this caliper, I'll just rest it on this container, take a bit of pressure off me. Now I'll place this caliper piston spreader inside the caliper, making sure that this section here is flush with the piston. As I said before, you don't want that to go in on an angle because it could jam the piston. So we're gonna go in flush. Now this side may be on a slight angle. This is a universal tool made for pushing back pistons in the calipers, uh, and it's used for all different type of cars. So now all I do is just wind that back and you'll see the piston slowly retract back in and also the oil will fill up in the master cylinder as well okay so that's going in beautifully very easy to use this tool 
So I have used G and F clamps in the past to do this, uh, pushing it from the back here. But the only problem is you've got to keep it stable and it's not as easy as this tool. Um, so this is where the piston can jam easier. So it's better to just use one of these tools if you have one. All right, so that's all the way in. I'll just now undo that and take it back out. Okay, there we are. Done. Okay, so now you can see it's all the way back. So all I've got to do now is push this back in. Okay, I'll put this back in now. Okay, that's tight. Okay, so now it's time to put the brake pads in, and you can see that Bendix have a mark here. So the mark basically tells you that the brakes have not been worn yet, so which is a good indicator. Now there is uh, one, uh, two different types here. So the ones with the prongs on the outside in this particular case for this Holden Cruise goes on the piston end, and this one here has got prongs in the middle that goes on the opposite end. So I'll just place them inside. And so the way you place them in is basically you can see the dome going downwards. It's got to be the same here because it's going downwards. So you've got to do it the same direction. Okay, that was a little tricky. There's a little bracket here just there. It's a thin metal. And so that has to be manipulated for you to get that in. Uh, I've never had that before actually. All right, so now this is the opposite end. So again, just got to go through this little bracket here. So just go through the side. You can see that poking through just there. And you just put it in the opposite end as well. Okay. There we go. All right, so that's now sitting in nice and tight and it's not moving. So all you've got to do now is just put the caliper back. So just turn that around and just put it back over the disc and it should fit comfortably because we push the pistons all the way back and then you just put those two screws back again. There we go. Okay, that's the first one in. Okay, that one's done. All right, I finished changing the driver side pads, which I've got to say was much easier the second time around, but just be mindful to tighten those screws. Now, I'll start on the rear brakes, but I just need to find the right size socket. So the rear bolt is actually slightly smaller, which is usually the case. Um, back brakes usually don't have as much pressure as the front brakes. So they're usually smaller and there's less engineering on the back. So this here, I believe is a 15 mil, not an 18 mil. Okay, you'll find these are pretty tight and you will need tools and you may even need a hammer okay there we go okay so now this part you have to be very careful with um, to release the back calipers you've got to actually lower your handbrakes down so be careful chock up the wheels and don't let the car roll because it will move okay there we are just need a little bit of persuasion Okay, so now you can see that this piston has come all the way out and we've got to bring it back. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is just put the multi-tool around the piston, pull this pretty tight on my hands and just turn it. Okay, so basically just wind it in. Now as I'm winding, you'll see the oil in the master cylinder starting to rise as the piston pushes the oil back. Just be careful if you are using the multi-tool not to rip this rubber around here because that is a seal. That's all the way in, that's perfect. Okay, now it's time to put the pads in. Uh, so now these pads are not a Bendix brand per se. Uh, in actual fact, it's made by Calibre, which is a subsidiary of Bendix. I wasn't able to get the proper brand on the day, but there does mark on the back here, there's an in and an out. So the in, it's really important to get this right. So the in is where it sits in the piston side. So make sure that you put it the right way up. So this one will be sitting on the back here like that. So make sure it goes the right way around. All right, so now I'll put that into place. 
Okay, and the one that says out, I'll put on the outside. Now remembering that the two red stripes are what touch the disc, so make sure you put it the right way around. The black section on these pads sit on the outside, so facing outwards. Okay, just close that in. All right, so I'm just gonna put the screw back in to the caliper, put it back together. Just lock that off. And then put the caliper back. And there it is there, it sits beautifully. And now I'll just put the two bolts back. Just make sure that you do lock the screws up tight. Okay, that's done. Only got one more to go. That's pretty bad. It's worn out and you can see there it's starting to break. And this side is not any better. Okay, we're done. So before I go any further, I'm going to test the brakes just to pump the brakes to see if it's uh, too soft because if it's soft it means it's got air in the line and it means we'll have to bleed the brakes. So we need to do that now before we put our tyres back on. Okay. I'll just sit inside and now... Okay, that's perfect. So when you first pump them, they will be soft because we've pushed all the pistons back. So what happens when you pump it, it's gonna push the uh, piston and push all the brake pads back onto the disc. So it's gonna take a few pumps to get the oil pushed back into that position. Okay, so the oil level looks pretty good. And so now I'll just close it off. And so if I did have to top it up, I would use Bendix brake fluid. Okay, so now I'll just close the bonnet. Okay, so the only thing I've got to do now is put the wheels back on, jack the car back down, and take it for a test run. So I'm still mindful that I may have to bleed the brakes, but at this point it's looking pretty good. So if you are interested, I'll put a link below of all the products I'll use today in the descriptions, and I'll also put a link for a mechanic if you're not able to do this kind of work. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any comments at all, please leave below and I will get back to you. And I'd ask if you please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video, and there's many more to come. Thanks guys.